Yes, Cleveland's coach Sam Ratigliano can afford to smile. Even last week, although quarterback Brian Sipe was playing with a slightly injured left wrist and Greg Pruitt was out with a bruised thigh, the Browns felt they had the firepower on offense to blast the mortar out of the Atlanta Falcons' stonewall defense. And for a coach who was supposed to be feeling his way, Sam Ratigliano had to be feeling proud. Now we'll watch the AFC Central take on an unexpected look as the Steelers meet the Bengals and the Browns meet the Falcons in an NFL doubleheader game of the week. In Atlanta, the Browns got the ball first and were immediately speeding along end zone bound. However, a penalty, a gradually toughening Atlanta defense and their own mistakes not only stalled the drive, but put the Falcons in the driver's seat. When number 30 fullback Cleo Miller fumbled, the Falcons were quick to pounce on the loose ball. With number 14, June Jones, at quarterback, Atlanta launched a drive that almost made the most of the opportunity. A pass to receiver Billy Reichman brought the Falcons to the Browns' seven-yard line. Then June had most of September to throw a perfect scoring strike to tight end Jim Mitchell, number 86. Now, it is unusual for Jim Mitchell to miss a ball like that. And as the repeat shows, there is no discernible explanation. In grandstand vernacular, he should have had it, but he didn't. So the Falcons settled for three on a Fred Stein for 24-yard boot. Meanwhile, the Atlanta defense had been dipped in starch and stiffened accordingly. When the Falcons got the ball, the Browns also yielded only meager amounts. So unable to do it in the dirt, Jones moved to the airways where number 86 linebacker Gerald Irons intercepted, fumbled, and was saved by number 27 safety Tom Darden. Now it was Don Cockroft's turn, and on the first play of the second quarter, he nodded the score from 43 yards out. Mistakes continued to plague Atlanta. This punt by John James was marked for a fair catch, but number 45, Tom Moriarty, got in the way, and the resulting penalty put the ball on the Atlanta 32-yard line much to the dismay of a quickly formed group of finger pointers. With this kind of break, Sipe was ready to cook. The recipe called for one 23-yard pass to wide receiver Dave Logan, which served to preheat the end zone. Then on a nicely executed play fake and a huge measure of protection that must have brought the Falcon defense to a boil, Sipe sliced the pass down the middle to first-year tight end Ozzie Newsom. The two-yard score was a piece of cake and put the Browns on top, 10-3. to three. A repeat shows that Sipe's textbook play fake initiated confusion amidst the Atlanta linebackers and pulled everyone up toward the line of scrimmage to make the scoring catch easy for Ozzie. Unwilling to let the Brownies skate away, Jones came right back. Over the middle to Mitchell was good for 18. Then Jones handed off to halfback Haskell Standback, who hit the hole, cut outside, and was end zone bound. Repeat shows that it was Stanback's quickness on the 15-yard romp that left the pursuit grasping for air and gasping at the 10-10 score. Now it was time for a little Cleveland daring. 
Seif threw a less than crushing block, but did screen the Falcon linebacker and allow wide receiver Reggie Rucker to run for first down yardage. Quick pass to Newsom, who cleared into the right flat, left the Browns 27 yards out, a distance that required but one play to cover. Again, Sipes' protection was enduring, and he arched the scoring strike right down the middle to Rucker. Pete shows that the usually potent Falcon rush must have taken a wrong turn outside of Plains, Georgia, because on this particular play, it wasn't worth peanuts. Or perhaps the Browns' offensive line is better than most people know. At any rate, Cleveland now led 17 to 10, going into the second half. The third period was one for the defenses. Neither team scored while both quarterbacks suffered a light shower of minor embarrassments. While Seif was able to weather his misfortunes, June Jones was not so lucky. He was replaced by number 10, Steve Bartkowski, the once and perhaps future king in Atlanta. The move made sense when Wallace Francis came up with a great leaping, stealing reception. But misinterpreting the ref's signal, he then took off for greener pastures. Despite the overflow of enthusiasm, the catch was allowed, but the touchdown was not. The drive petered out, and a field goal attempt failed. In the fourth quarter, the game became as tense as a snare drum roll when Sipe was hard hit fumbled and the Falcons recovered. Bartkowski was getting fortress-like protection and firing bullseyes to Billy Reichman from the parapets. Rookie runner Ray Strong charged in from the two, but the point after was missed and Atlanta trailed 17 to 16. Sensing that it might be slipping away, Seif unloaded a perfect pass and catch routine to Ricky Feature number 83. That was good for 42 yards. It was an inspiring catch that led to a less than picture perfect fumble and pick up and two yard score by Seif that sealed the Browns third win 24 to 16 and left them undefeated atop the AFC Central. All that remained was some final policing action, which was accomplished when Tom Darden stopped the Falcons' last-ditch scoring effort. The Browns are a surprise, but they won't sneak up on Pittsburgh this week because with their 3-0 record, they're beginning to look suspiciously like contenders rather than long shots. But maybe Coach Sam Ratigliano will have something up his sleeve to stymie the steel curtain.